There's everybody. What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, February 2nd. And uh, and we're playing some Princes of the Apocalypse. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing, players? Everybody's good? Good, good. Everybody's camera looks good? Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do I see some have a little mini mute button? Because you guys muted yourself. You don't have to mute yourself, by the way. In, uh, in OBS Ninja, because we took that ability for you to talk in there out. Thank you, Matt Carey. Took it out. Uh, so, uh, is Clyde here yet? <laughs> Well-trained VC hands. <laughs> I see, I see, uh, and Gorgio's waiting to spend his Yeah, Gorgio can suck points. a turd out Clyde's ass. That fucker. Suck a turd out. Well, uh, last week you guys uh, did some stuff and and you made it back to Red Large. So uh, let's do uh, let's do character introductions. And uh, let me bring up the uh, the the portraits for the characters. Here we go. So we're gonna start off this fine evening with Jangalang. Tell us about Jangalang, Sven. I mean uh, Caesar. Jangaling is a young 17-year-old <clears throat> elf bard who is uh, just starting his career in adventuring with this ragtag group. And um, he's very green behind the ears. Green. And his ears are pointed. You can see them underneath his, uh, his hair. He looks more human. than. But when elves are that young, what do you want, right? <clears throat> right. Soleil, soon to be Sheila. Tell us about that guy, Sven. So Soleil is just finally turned two, level two barbarian. Uh, he likes running around through the forest with his brother and his dad. And right now we're in a, uh, coming back to Red Larch because we are members of the Harpers and we're uh, trying to track down some of the strange goings on in Red Larch. There's some strange going ons for sure in the Desserin Valley. That's for sure. So long walks on the beach with your father and son. Oh, in the forest, sorry. Uh, number three is Marbanius playing Pinch. This little guy way down Pinch. here. Pinch. If you need it to Pinch, call Pinch. He uh, fixes things. He uh, he's curious. He collects knowledge. He uh, just kind of new around here, and and he, he's got a connection to these guys, but he doesn't realize it. So it's you know the the funny part about the character is he doesn't even realize that he's already grouped up with 
with people that he's supposed to be grouped up with anyway. So he's just kind of <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. You know, in secret yeah. society. No one knows that they're in the yeah, same society. Exactly, exactly. So uh, you know, he came to Red Larch from uh, the inn down the road. That the big shambling inn. What's uh, Bramble? Bridge, Bramble uh, Inn. Bridge, bridge, uh, barge. Barge right. Barge. Something. Barge right in. Barge yeah. right in. And uh, yeah, and uh, so. He's just kind of keeping his eye on these guys because they're kind of they're mysterious characters, and, and that's what he was sent here to do is keep his eye on mysterious characters. Mis mis mysterious, mysterious. So Valtrex, tell us a little bit about uh, Lumina. Yeah, hey everybody. Uh, so Lumina is uh, a uh, Dusk Elf Ranger. He's not officially part of one of these uh, secret societies, um, but. Uh, you know, he, uh, he's known to them and uh, likes to do some good, so uh, works with them on occasion. And uh, he's just happy to, uh, you know, have, have gotten his father uh, out, out, his adopted father out into the world to adventure um, and uh, enjoys adventuring with his sister. His sister, nice. That's, That's got to be sweet. Sister Sheila? Yeah, right? That's right, isn't it? Sometimes. It's just, it's all right. Your sister will, will sh sh show you what he's got later tonight when you're asleep. <laughs> Do you like tea? Uh, Marta, Marta Curie, tell us about uh, what you had to put up with these last couple of decades. How long have you been uh, fostering? How long did you foster these kids? Tell us that. Since they were born. Uh, so yes, I am playing Veril, who is a middle-aged hippie druid who likes to smoke uh, near everything, um, so much so that he uh, he spends most of his time contemplating and looking up at the stars. And uh, he is the adopted father of uh, these two rapscallions, uh, Soleil, as he likes to call himself, and Lumina. Um, he named them that when he found them in the woods after one of his favorite phrases, El Sila Lumina Vumentiengul, which is Elvish for a star shines upon the hour of the meeting of our ways. Ooh, interesting. So Soleil has on his character sheet that he's 55 years old. <laughs> if you've, you've had to deal with this, these kids for 55 years? Just, yeah, they're slow to grow up. And the long, long teen years. And Lumina just typed in fifty five because he didn't know how old his character was. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, after a certain age, you stop counting. Yeah, especially as a as an elf, because it, it yeah. wasn't like I kept track of the years either. So. <laughs> You're right. It's all just one 50, big blur. Fifty five years. Yeah, it does go by fast. When you're Soleil elf, probably, especially. you know, wrote it in his diary. It's pink and has hearts on it with a little only lot. live a little bit yeah. longer than humans, though, don't they? I think half elves only live slightly longer than humans. So Soleil has burned a lot of his childhood up being hanging around with elves. <laughs> All right, well, you guys are, uh, after you went to the tomb and decided not to do any grave robbing, uh, you uh, were ambushed outside the, uh, the tomb by an ogre and a goblin. And I'm assuming you guys went back to town so you could level up, right? Yeah, it's only you're only like two and a half hours from town, so not a big deal if you wanted to come back out here for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, so you guys are in Red Larch. I'm assuming you're in uh, the inn, correct? You're not just like laying in the street. Did you guys uh, get a room at the inn? Uh, let me give you the Red Larch map, the big map. It's nice, not lagging. It's nice. I'm sleeping in my hammock. Yeah, what was the issue with that? Uh, as a tree that had two million pixels of line of sight on it. 
Yeah, there was uh, a map that Drake made that had an excessive <laughs> quantity of line of so, sight nodes. So every time Fantasy Grounds would auto update every five minutes, it would lag out for 30 seconds. It was, it was pretty trying good. To, had save. to save all them. It was pretty good detective two, work on Matakiri's part. Yeah. Two different layers, each with 28,000 line of sight nodes. I, bl so I, blame, trying it. To I blame it on those. Joshua. It's he made it. He made it. He made that asset. No, I don't know. The new one. It was it was from so. the official art packs. So. Oh, we'll have to uh, find out what that is to see if I still have, if I have the same issue. I I retried them on my copy and they were perfectly fixed on my copy. So, if you've updated, then they shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so the inn is the uh, the swinging sword. If you guys remember, the it's swinging masculine place. sword is. Uh, I do have an image, but this this is this is the biggest image I have in my repartee right now. But I think I already shared it with you. Did that load up right away? Yep. Yep. So this is the swinging sword. Uh, first floor. Obviously, I don't have a second floor. Unless there's, is there a layer to this? No. Just one layer. So, uh, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. You guys uh, wake up. Rel refreshed. Uh, let me make sure that uh, we have a, a rest. And you guys can check to make sure that you got any uh, racial <clears throat> uh, effects that missed or didn't get missed in your uh, in, the, in the combat tracker everybody got leveled up everybody's level two now I oh, do so what do you guys want to do what's what's the what's the characters want to do what, what do you guys think what's uh What's the topic over breakfast? Let me uh, let me throw you on this map to get you guys in the in the mood of of that. I'm gonna stick you right down here. Put you guys around these two tables here. So you kind of scooch these two tables together, and you're having whatever they got in their limited kitchen supply here. Let me turn off the token locks. There you guys go. Let me put on line of sight because all those tables need line of sight on them. I'm kidding. We got one more quest, right? Yeah. Yes. The, um... We did the plague. We did the ghost story. Now we just got to do that. Gale Kurz is busy at night. Yes, we haven't been to the quarry yet. Check out uh, that at night. So it's yeah, it's morning. Hey, Lumina, I was, I was finally able to get that trick I've been working on to finally work. So if I really focus, put all my strength, I'm able to strike true, but uh, it does leave me a little open during combat, but finally got it to work. I think I've got it down now. That's good. It only took you 55 years to learn that. <laughs> so Galida is your server this morning. And uh, and she comes over. Oh, look whose morning it is. And she comes over and she gives Pinch a little tweak on the cheek. Oh, God, golly gee. Did you guys sleep well? Seems that uh, you are you're going to be a fixture around the town these days. Are you are you guys staying? I've seen you here more and more. Even Kalesa has mentioned seeing you. No, it's just that we really like the unique smell of the town. She looks at you and smiles. You're a special kind of individual, aren't you? I've been told that, yes. I can tell. 
Pinch orders his breakfast and he gobbles it down. I mean, gobbles it. Gob, gob, gob. gob just gob. We're, and we, we have breakfast burritos this morning. Stuff oh, well, he'll have two or three and then stick ham, one in his pocket for later. Ham, mushrooms, and cheese. Oh, yeah. So he, he does that. And then he looks at everybody and says, I got to go. Uh, take care of some business. And I'll catch up with you later. And he scoots the bathroom's out the door. in there. Well, Jingling yells out before you go out the door. Says, it's not an outhouse. Uh, well, he heads down. He's, he's, he's yet to make contact with his, uh, his faction contact here. And he's supposed to find the guy at the junkyard. So he's never met this guy before. Uh, but he wants to let him know that he's on the trail of some mysterious people. Oh, you want to go he's down kind of... to uh, number 22 is where you want to go. Yeah, stay away uh, from my place. But it's such a good outhouse. Yeah, so you don't know it, what he's... It works great. You're not quite sure what he's talking about. Outhouse? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, down to 22. So you guys have breakfast. You do your thing. I'm going down here to meet with this guy and let him know that I'm... That I've got my eye on some pretty mysterious some sneaky looking types all right so you so you so you go into this place now the outside of the place it's aside from the bewildering profusion of doors barrels rotting old furniture and tools leaning against its outside walls this building looks like a private home a small faded sign on the front door reads valvavos sundries and the rooms are crammed to the rafters with new wares and used items of all sorts so yeah, when you go in, it, it looks like it looks like this. Yeah, but what's dude's name that uh, runs this? Uh, you know, guy. He, he looks like H.G. Willikers kind of. Yeah, he's his name is uh, Indrith Valvlo. Ender, Indrith. But uh, yeah, Indy. people call him Indy. In, Indy. Yeah, Indy. Yeah. He he's he's he's. Uh, there's a bunch of kids running around. Uh, Dragging, you know, stuff around and organizing slash disorganizing things, <laughs> you know, knocking shit over, just being kids. And uh, he, he's rummaging through some stuff. And he as you come in, he looks he pops his head up and he, oh, I, I, I thought you were one of the children there for a minute. You're, you're one of those halflings. I can recognize your fuzzy feet. Well, so if I put shoes on, I could be a child then, huh? Yeah. You, you sure could pass well, well that hat you, you would have to do something with that hat but. what's the what's the thing that the the harpers say you know the, the, i can't remember now are, are you, anyway are you one of yeah, those he gives, that harp yes one of those that harp yeah he gives a secret harper <laughs> whatever yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there a he man woman sign? haters club there's a secret and harper uh sign. Like, yeah all he does wait, is how do you he do says, H's? I don't know. You guys so, can come up with it. Yeah, so he just lets him know that he's he's got his eye on some sneaky types and, and he might be in touch with him. <laughs> sneaky types? What, what do you mean, sneaky? Do you, hold on a second. Well, they just kind of, you know, one of them's kind of a, he's like a walking tree, really, smoking all the time. But there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. A tree? A walking? A, the tree act? I, I've got a book on that over here. He's got starts fumbling up through his books. He, he, he pulls a book out from a big stack. Here it is. Tree ends for dummies. Pinch looks through it. Is there any pictures? Yeah, it's a bunch of trees. Yeah. Looks at it and he's like, no, this this isn't him. He's an elf, but he looks like a, I don't know. He's just, they're different types. He's a different type, I'm telling you. Something mysterious about them. Not racist I, or anything. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, are you interested in a, in a fire poker? I've got a new rack right over here. No, no, no. Let's see. Uh, I just thought I'd, you know, make contact with you here and tell you to, that, you know, I may need. It's my first Harper mission, you know, and he kind of puffs his chest up a little bit. Oh. Wow. In case I need backup, I thought I'd let you know I'm here in town. You know, I'm here yes. to take care of business. Oh, yeah. 
you're uh, you're here to check out what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you were with the other fellows that are in town. What other fellows in town? What are you well, talking one about? of them looks like you know, you could mistake him as a strange elf. Sure. But he's he's not a harper. The rest. But of he's not a harper. So. I didn't think so. Oh, the rest. What do you mean the rest of the group? Well, there's this. There's uh, Jangalang. I mean, he he's just getting his uh, he's just getting his pin. And uh, and then there's then there's of course there's Varel. He's been, uh, okay, so so now Pinch group, goes. But, but hold Varel's that hold that a, thought. Not a Harper either. Um, I, I you ain't that. seen me. Hold that thought. You ain't seen me. I'll see you later. And Pinch runs back out the door. Heads back down there. He's like, I guess he had to put this book back. <laughs> As he goes out the door. He doesn't seem too Harpery to you. <laughs> I don't know what, what you what you expected to be as a Harper. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that. I'm like, yeah. I... Uh. So as uh, as you're making your way back down the street, um. Back at the at the end, you guys are finishing up your your burritos, and uh, Pinch comes in has one more. <laughs> Can I get another one of those? We actually saved you one. There's a bite taken out of it. Varel just wants pastries. The bread yes. shop. Yes, Soleil's also going to the uh, bakery. Sweet tooth. <laughs> Well, it's more than mushroom cheese as you, buns. As you guys are, are are getting ready to leave, uh, the the what's her the waitress's name? She says, uh, Galita. She says, I've got a a new, I've got a new busboy, and he's he's almost as cute as Pinch, and uh, he's uh he's gonna come out and and clean up the table and everything, and uh. So out of the kitchen, you guys see this little short guy. He's got uh, he's got a bowler hat on, and uh, he comes waddling oh. out, and he's carrying a he's carrying a busing tray in his hand, and uh, he comes over to the table, and he reaches down into the busing tray like he's gonna pull out a rag, but instead of a rag, it's a couple of fistfuls of poop. You're not sure where the poop came from this time, but uh, he starts to sling it all over the place, and it hits Lumina or, and Soleil right in their burrito. Yep. Oh, I'll, I'll pass on that one. Thank you. Uh, can I have a fresh one, please? Why is Peanut my, butter uh, burritos. I must have deleted the uh, something up there because it's just a question mark. <laughs> I deleted some images messing around today, so as to be. Was it a tree with twenty eight thousand right. links? But you guys have been poo slapped by Clyde the Pooling and Monkey, thanks to Engorgio in the chat. Yep, it's usually Engorgio. Got that out of the way. Oh yeah. To fit that in in the middle of the combat somewhere. <laughs> I think Engorgio is going to have a King Kong Clyde. See, it's best to wait until the appropriate appropriate more, a moment to to fit him in, but then you miss the chance of using him, like when Caesar pops in and just uses him. <laughs> so he he pretty much wants to get it get it out of the way. Uh, so Kalesa, the owner of uh the end she she comes over after you guys are, are talking and they're serving you and you guys hang out for about an hour i mean you don't you don't really know pinch comes back in and, and sits down so kalesa i think you've seen her around kalesa urkel conclide he throws a mountain of poop at you Ooh. she she uh She's really friendly and uh, she likes to 
it's Harry in the in your vicinity, you know, she kinda hanging around and She turned tricks, huh? And uh she kinda listens in a little bit and move you know, but not trying to be too nosy nosy looking, but uh she she comes over and she says, Did did I hear that you guys were out at the old tomb? Yes. Hmm. You wouldn't happen to have been on the other side of town lately. Near a near the the Lance Rock. Hmm. Sounds familiar. I think there were some good shrooms out there. I know there was something going on out there at the Lance Rock. Oh, why there was a that? plague. Yeah. Yeah, there was a plague. Yeah, something like that. I, I just, I don't know. I just had a feeling and, and you know, visions, I think, of, of something strange. Did, did you guys, have you guys been out there? What I, kind I think, of... Um... Think he's vibe something. am I getting from her? Am I able to do like an insight yeah, or something? Yeah, insight this insight her man. Yeah, both of you guys can uh can roll insight. When she mentions visions, I'll pipe up and say that I see strange things in visions all the time and they usually don't turn out to be much. I don't normally see <laughs> visions. It's just as of late the last few months is occasionally I'll have strange visions and like I sensed an evil presence which I suppose I can't tell if it was evil or not but in my bones I, I know this was evil for sure uh, Slay, guys, he's scaring people again you guys seem to think she's being cautious with you but but do, do I do I does does she seem like a like a shyster, like a snake oil salesman, or does does she seem like she might be a legitimate seer of some kind? You do not think she's a seer at all. She, you think she's the owner of this tavern, so she's probably not uh. a shyster. But uh, she does seem concerned, though. There's a guy out there who was bringing back people from the dead, making them into zombies and such. Let's just say he ain't doing it no more. Did did he have a did he have an eye? Like a big eye. He had two eyes. No. They don't work very well no more though. No, I saw a big a big glowing eye. Every Pinch time. has that. You mean this? And, yeah. <laughs> he looks over Jangalang and and Pinch starts looking around for like a gem or something that might be round in his pocket. Not the not the eye thing. Not the eye eye thing. And then he can't find any gems, so he pulls it out. <laughs> He's like, I'm brown. And he shoots a dirty look at Jangalang and McDang Dang. I think he's got it. I keep wanting to go to uh, identity. Looks like inventory. Yeah, uh, I'm having trouble with that too. Where's the uh, notes tab? <laughs> I'm so I got so used to the notes tab that it's. You mean gone. the drift club? This drift club that Pinch has that he's been walking around with? Yeah, it's the glowing thingy. No, uh, no, that's. That's not it. it. It's it was it was deeper. It it it, it looked at you. It, you could see. Oh, the no, it disappeared. What? It went away. She's confused. She's like, "What do you mean?" She looks at your drift globe. Was it in it? Is that evil? You're talking about that other picture, right? The eye. Nah, this thing, thing ain't evil. We saw something. 
eyeballish floating and when we checked it out it floated away well tell us what you seen and maybe we might take a trip back out there i thought it was a drift globe that was above the altar floating there glowing it yeah. was but there was something more to it before we touched it there was a there was a, a eye, this this eye thing floating back behind it or something yeah she says it's it's like it's like very bright though, and it's shaped like a diamond you know like a like a maybe like a cat's eye so i've seen it in my vision she draws a little sketch on the napkin and it looks kind of like this yeah exactly that's the thing i was like yeah at. what can you tell us about it besides seeing it in a dream she goes i don't know i i saw it i saw it one night when when i had a dream of of lance rock it was it was in there it was near there i, I don't know i i can't explain how but since the recent troubles every now and then i I get that feeling that it's it's looking at me. Yeah, that he had this in his little den there, but like I said, it, it ain't working no more. Do what? We broke it. You but when you went out, you found you found someone. You said you found someone with two eyes. And he was yeah, the guy bringing up the dead the people. Well, yeah, he tried right. to kill us. What's well, all right? We returned him to the state he was bringing people back into. Well, since all this evil has has started, uh, I I was looking for someone to to go out and and investigate you know i even i even talked to the constable or or and and the town elders and and none of them have helped so i suppose since you guys did go out and and investigate and and all that i suppose this money i put together belongs to you she pulls out a, mm, a pouch jingle coins. jangle free money and she sets it on. Yeah, we table. killed him. She sets it on your table. She said, now, don't be leaving that there because that new individual, Clyde, I'm sure he'll just buy more poop with it. They ought to outlaw people without pants. So, uh, it's got 50 gold in it. It's nice. It's enough for a night or two at the end. Yeah. But I'll I got slide it over to at the crummy bed or the crummy uh, rail hostel down the road. So the rooms here, you you have the five silver piece rooms, and then you have the the two gold piece rooms. So those are the the differences. The two gold piece room actually comes with. Uh, meals. It's it's MEP planned, <laughs> and uh, the uh, and it has a your own chimney and firewood provided, and a bath. Or you can sleep in the barracks with the kids again. But it's two gold a night. Is a, is a is a comfortable cot. It's two gold a night. Yes. And we just got ten gold apiece. That's five nights in this nice place. Well, you were talking about staying over at the at the at the. Well, I paid I paid for it, but I'm gonna go over there and 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 tell them I want just to hold that on credit that I'm gonna be gone for a few days. But they can keep the money, but I'm gonna want to take use of them rooms later. It's not a room them... over there. It's not a room. Yeah, I guess they are rooms. Oh, uh, the, the bunk. The yeah. the the slot the the pallet that i get mother yolanta's 
Yolanthus. Yeah. Mother Yolanthus. It's a boarding house is what it is. Yeah, boarding house. Uh, yeah, there's, it's just a bed in a, crammed in a room. <laughs> you know, that's it. My outhouse but there's, is better there's than that privies, joint. There's privies. A, there's a communal bath, you know, but there's no kitchen or anything over there. It's just, it's just a boarding house. And it's so dirty, dusty. The, a lot of the miners stay here when they're in town working. The ones that don't own property or live here. The labor pool. A.K.A. a flop house. Isn't that what they used to be called? Yep, single, pinch be right home. Uh, single night rooms are five silver pieces per night for priority booking, meaning if you show up and you need a room that night, they're five silver pieces. But you can negotiate cheaper rooms depending on how long you pay in advance for and i think that's what pinch did right yeah paid for a week i think a 10 day and he stayed one night so i've got nine nights coming to me i'll be back though at the door he scuttles right back over there gonna live life of luxury for about five days and mother yolanta says mm, i don't i don't you don't have to be here i don't care you got your money in my pocket yeah. <laughs> she puffs on her pipe. I just got a new shipment yeah. in from the Golden Fields yesterday. Oh, you did? You got any extra of that? It's a good strain. What's that going uh, for? I guess it's in short, short stature, fellas like you. I bet I know where you got that. Well... Mother Yolanta, I'll see you when I get back. Thank you. Nine days, you hear me? Nine days. I'll bring you something for your for your good looks. <laughs> Out the door you go. So she thinks to herself, I can rent that room out for eight days and he'd never know it. <laughs> That's right. Not that I'd leave any of my shit there anyway. So you guys have met uh, the halfling, uh, what's his name? Is it here? The guy that works at the wagon shop. Stanner Thistlehair. Did we meet so him at a bar? Yeah, you, he, you, yeah, see, him, you see him uh, walking down the street. He's, like, doo, 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 doo. He's got like a little toolbox with him. He's like, doo, 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 doo. He, he walking, you know, this way down the street. He goes to number 16. Stanner Thistlehair. He's the one that, uh, that you guys kind of... I think Pinch was most of it kind of convinced him to 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 check out what's going on. If he sees yeah, anything strange town. going on, yeah. Yeah, he told me it was expensive. Yeah, did you pay him? I don't think you did. I haven't paid him anything yet. Yeah. I said it all depends on the value of the information. Applied him with some free drinks too, right? I like, know, yeah, I liquored him up pretty good. Yeah. He he didn't tell you anything that you uh, didn't already know. Is that where that's from, Baldur's Gate? Uh-oh. Yep, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite games. We I just still have it on Raiders. my computer. Raided by Campfire Quest. What's up, guys? You guys done early? What the hell? It's not even it's not even nine o'clock in Orlando. What are you guys doing out early? Park Place. Park Palace. Pali. Pali vous France? Short one since I we just got back. Where were you guys? Disney? <laughs> just started Baldur's Gate again. Doing another playthrough of it. 
on hiatus. On yeah, hiatus. you guys haven't been streaming at all. Slackers. Uh, so what, do, what are we doing? What, how are we doing it? Well, we've got, uh, Plague Near Lance Rock. We didn't see any item like this lady's talking about. You think it's worth the trip back out there? Other than it disappeared, I mean, it was... I thought that thing disappeared when we took the drift globe down. I thought that was the drift globe just in a fancy case, so I have no, no idea what the was, hell's going on. The drift globe was the the hands were clutching the drift globe and the drift globe was was lit, but above the drift globe was this image. And it and the image kind of moved around a little. But as soon as you touch the drift globe, the drift globe went out and the image vanished. And we searched that place pretty thoroughly, I think. I don't know if there's much value in going back. Unless we go back and put the drift globe back. Those hands so we were tried just, that, it wouldn't... They, they were just leaned up on there. It wasn't like a anything special. Put the book back. Yeah, but didn't we put the glow back up there and then it didn't light up again or something? Yeah, you guys played with it. I think we did. Yeah, because I was about ready to throw it on the ground. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to the quarry. See what we can find out there. So you're going to number 12 or number 18? Um, which one did it say? Was it 18 that was having the issues at night? I thought it was 12. But it was it 12? I don't remember for sure. Uh, no, it was, it was 18. The, uh, I think the quest is still in the message of the day. Gulkers is yeah. busy at night lately. Yeah, when orders for her stone are backed up, Milhiko usually has her stone cutters work at night shift by torchlight. Over the last month or two, they've been scared off by mysterious dark robed figures wearing stone masks who watch them from the shadows. And you guys can, you get bits and pieces of this, you know, from, especially Pinch over near the, the, uh, the boarding house. You know, that's where a lot of those guys hang out, so. And they like to hang out in Gale Kirkers, the barbershop slash bar slash pawn shop. <laughs> Which is across it's, the street. And it sounds like it's not every night, so we might need to stake the place out for a couple nights in a row. I feel like Maybe I'm we listening should... to Delilah. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, pose as workers. Gonna See if they'll try to sleep. scare us off. Yeah, you guys could pass as workers. Pull a couple night shifts over there. Take some lanterns in. Maybe a drift globe. Mm-hmm. You guys can work. I'll be the foreman. Child labor. So we head down there. Just for Marbania. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Red Light Lounge. And Soleil and Lumina will do like a perimeter check looking for any kind of tracks, anything that we can see overlooking the quarry. So you guys make your way down to the to the quarry here. Let's let's check it out. Let's see. 
a sign set on two posts and a scrap of weedy lawn out front of this small house reads Milko Stoneworks. Uh, and you can see behind the house that there's a quarry pit. It just it starts just behind the behind the house there. And uh, and you can hear a woman uh, cajoling and cursing the sweating stone cutters there. So she's get your ass back to work, you slobbity slob slob slobbities. Uh, and she's a she's a pot belly and usually jovial whirlwind of a woman. As you guys see her milling about, uh, let me give you an image of her. There she is. You guys like, about like come over size. towards the house and stuff. You know, the doors are all open. It's it's a nice day out. I want to ask her if she has any strudel. She says strudel. I don't got no stinking strudel. But do you have spooks at night? That's a better question. What do you mean, spooks at night? Well, rumor has it, there's been a, some spooks at night around here, and you ain't been able to get your work out. Ah, uh, I think it's a bunch of poppycock, if you tell me. Bunch of lazy, no good, want the night off. We've got wa we've got work to do. We've got rock to cut. We've got me. We've got to make this marble get to water deep. It's important. They're building stuff there all the time. Well, what's I mean? There's certainly there's got to be a value to having someone see to this so you can get your workers back to work at night. Any of the them there workers? Who's seen something? Are they around? Well, sure. They're all working. How much? That's what I how pay much them you, to do. But you're not working at night, are you? And normally you do. If when I can get these idiots to work, they claim this and they claim that. But I haven't seen any of this. That's all poppycock. It's all overblown. Well, I'll tell you what, we'd take a look into it for you for 250 gold pieces, and I'll have you know, we're pretty well-known adventurers around here. Oh, really? Well-known adventurers? We certainly are. Hey, thanks for the host, Eraser Texas. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well-known adventurers? Well, let me look in my well-known adventuring logbook here. She fumbles through some books, like being a smartass. I don't see your name in it anywhere. Who might well, you be called? Uh, we are called, and he let turns around add, and he looks at... Let me add that name in. He looks at Jangalong, he looks at the rest of these guys. We're called... Uh, <laughs> he draws a complete blank. The weirdos. She's like, well, if you really, really are brave adventures you should you should head out to trickle rock mm -hmm. i heard there's a great treasure out there trickle rock huh yeah trickle rock cave so you don't have a problem here at night then you're not uh you're not looking to hire anybody to take care of a problem well i'm sorry i i, I bothered you then well 250 gold i mean that's a lot of money. How much? You're you're losing twice that every night, not being able to cut stone. Ah, uh, my goodness. Most of those workers at night were drunk, anyways. Didn't so what's it worth to you? At night by torchlight. I can tell you'd like to get them back to work. What's it worth to you? Let's come to an agreement here. Well, exactly what are you going to do? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of it, because there ain't no such thing as spooks, lady. Well, there are, but we take care of them, too. She says, ten gold. 
ten. God. She says, yep, "I might be able rocket, to scrounge that up." She fumbles in her pocket. Ten gold a piece. You mean? Ten. Fifty gold. No. no. She's like nine. And one, she starts counting silver. Two, how about nine gold and eight silver? Uh, just looking and around her little office. She pulls out some candy wrappers out of the pile. Do I see any receipts or anything where she's like transactions of laying around on any of the paper on her desk or I don't know how clean her office is. It's it's dusty, dirty, nasty. And uh, on her the desk, kind of place to... piles of papers. So you just like, like go over to her desk and start looking around, like because her desk is up to here on you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of looking, you know, looking for some money figures to see, you know, maybe there's not as much money comes through here as I'm thinking there is, but ten gold for risking our lives. I just, well, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's poppycock. You, you're risking your life for some rumor. Trickle rock, you say. Now, if it's a rumor, that's worth risking your life for. That treasure out there is supposed to be enormous. If it's a rumor, you won't mind if we take a walk around the perimeter of your operation here to uh, now, I, verify that there are no tracks or anything. Sure, absolutely. You're more than welcome to enter the quarry. However, Milocos or any of us here cannot be responsible if there's an accident and you get scorched. And she looks down at Pinch. <laughs> I have developed She's talent big for staying out of the, the way. <laughs> well, you, you ought, might too. And you guys kind of she leans, you know, let's kind of shows you out to the back. There's like a window that she yells out of. And you can see there's like 18 or 19, maybe 20 workers out there milling about, moving around. So you think you're going to find a lot of tracks. But it, it sounds like these well, people who were watching or whatever were up on the outside of the quarry. We're watching uh, from the shadows. Is that what the rumor so, so, has? She says. Sure, that's hey, not Pops, my property. Hey, Pops, why don't you go? So w once we leave, I'll say, hey, Pops, why don't you go talk to a couple of them here workers while Luma and I will go check it out. And we're going to go out and around, up around the edge, looking down at Varel, uh, who will signal us if we if there's particular places that we need to look and pay more attention to. And I'll okay, ask so around it's... sharing around some uh some brownies and uh ask the workers. Oh, they're really about not gonna work now. <laughs> Kinda Feed them and, and just get an idea of what they saw, the, what they did. The roach coach just pulled up in the in the quarry, right? And then the horn goes off. Break! 15 minutes! It's about 10 o'clock by the time you guys get out here and start milling about. Uh, what's Pinch doing? Does he leave? or? Uh, no, Pinch goes with, uh, he goes with Beryl. And uh, he's a heads, yeah, heads in to talk to people. And uh, what about uh, Jenga Lang? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go down there. I'm not gonna do much help looking for yeah, tracks and stuff. Tracks so I go down there and talk to the uh, the workers, like and see see if I can cough up any information. So there's like a looks like maybe the veteran miner or something he's got like the oldest looking uh suspenders and stuff out here he's he comes over as you guys are walking out into the quarry area you know it's loud there's noise and chiseling and banging and carts going off he says you ain't here to work 
Because you ain't got the proper clothing on. What brings you out to the quarry? I see Malika out there is uh, is waving you in. What what brings you out here? Ooh, what are those? And he leans over and smells your, your brownie. I will happily share one with him and say, uh, we just brought a couple of treats, wanted to ask a few questions. Oh, definitely answer some quick did you bring some milk too to go with them uh might sheila be may be able to provide dry. some later she sheila who's sheila looks around are you sheila points to the halfling <laughs> are you can you speak english <laughs> Yeah, this is my little uh, little buddy Pinch. Um, you can't speak English. That's why you're saying no. Oh, he doesn't talk. <laughs> he, he don't. He don't talk too much. Huh. Well, he's what so about short. Your the other sound takes a while. I've seen him around town. You and then them boys, aren't you? The rascals. What do you call yourself? I used to be. I used to be one of the rascals. Oh, you growed up. Now I'm an adventurer. You? Oh, you're adventurers. Well, these are pretty good brownies. He's already feeling the effects. He's like, whoa. Yeah, I make pretty good brownies. And we've been hearing that some strange stuff has been going on around this place. Is that right? Strange stuff. Only, only at night, some of the fellers have said they seen some spooky individuals yeah like uh, have you seen anybody well just i seen somebody but not like they say they're wearing masks and they're watching them but i seen somebody one night right over there and he points up onto the like up by the one on on the 18 and i i just seen someone going away from the quarry one night the other oh. guys on the line said they seen him though said he was wearing a mask some kind of I'll, stone mask i'll uh use my staff and just kind of raise it up into the air and uh some smoke tendrils will come out of the end of the staff and then begin pointing in the direction that i want uh lumina and uh soleil to to investigate he looks down at his brownie and looks back up at you What's exactly in this brownie? Lots of good things. <laughs> Lots of good things. Maybe I might see them individuals here after all. If you see anybody, come let us know. And if you need more brownies, you know where to find me. I'm going to tell them, you know, that your boss, uh, Miss Miliko, Miliko Ho, Thinks you guys are a bunch of full of full of shit, and just don't want to work. That's why you uh, saying you're seeing things. Well, I don't work the night shift. I I've been here long enough that I don't have to do that anymore. But some of these fellas need the money, but they scared to work. And you believe them. I believe they're scared, or I believe they need the money. Pretty much both. You believe they're scared, and they've actually seen these mysterious figures. Well, why would somebody make that up? Because they're lazy, and they don't want to work. Maybe they just want to get paid. Maybe it's a... Maybe it's a... A quest for the mystery machine. About what time do the uh, sightings usually occur? Huh. He says, I don't right know. The one I saw, it was it was pretty much before midnight. Yep. It was in the dark. Has anybody followed hey, these individuals? or That fella right there, Billy. Come here, Billy. Billy comes over. Billy's got one arm. 
and he's got a like a attached to his where he's missing an arm he's got like a a blade that's real wide at the end for <coughs> cutting in between the marble slabs and breaking them apart he's got it strapped onto his arm he comes over with this contraption it's this big bulky thing and he's got to keep fastening it and tightening it up all the time he comes over and he looks over at you and he says what is it who are these fellas I'll offer him a brownie as well. Ooh, brownie. Whoever turns down I'll a brownie, let, right? I'll explain to him what, uh, but we're kind of interested in what we're looking for. Any information on these weird sightings at I, night? I uh, did, I did. I saw that individual. He, he, he was about your height, maybe your build, and, uh, and uh, he had just, regular old cloak you know clothes on and uh, but he had a a mask it looked like it was made out of stone and he was just staring at me through that mask I could see his eyes just looking at me through that mask he had to be 20 feet away it was dark out but you know, whereabouts was that we got torches uh, he kind of points up on the, up on the, up on the hill back there. And I'll do the same thing with my staff. With the, uh, the smoke issuing to where I want them, uh, my sons to investigate. Uh, all right. So, uh, are you guys are up on the hill. You seeing these little arrows and smoke screens coming that way? Yeah, we're watching down, and when we see the smoke, does we, it we say anything over. to them, or do they just recognize it as one of your smoke trails? <laughs> yeah, just they they know what my staff does, and and uh, they'd know some basic signals. Yeah, so you can does see it them smell down. Piney? You can't you can't hear anything they're talking about, you know, as you come up on this hill, but you can see them talking to these people, and they're pointing in that direction, and. And he points, makes the arrow, f and you get the general gist. He wants you to go look in that general area, and you do. You do see some. You do see some booted tracks in in the area. Do uh, do they lead off anywhere? Yeah, give me uh, both of you guys. Give me a survival roll. Let's see how well these tracks have held up and how good you guys are. Well, a nineteen is is pretty good, uh, Lumina. Uh, you, uh, you get the, uh, the only way they can go is, you know, away from the, obviously away, they can't go down into the quarry because that's like a pretty good drop off unless somebody's like super athletic or whatever. But you can see that they do come from the road and go back to the road. But they're, they're kind of, you know, all around this hill area and stuff. The footprints but they do come and go to the road which so, obviously you're going to lose on the heavy travel main yeah unfortunately there's no tradeway. no tracks we can follow but at least we know they aren't ghosts but they appear to be uh just you know standard humanoid medium-sized booted footprints so bipedial so do we see anything else around the rest of the quarry? Anywhere else around it? Nothing in particular. I mean, uh, you get the the smell of fresh baked bread <laughs> blowing down from the from the south. The wind kind of changes direction. You're like, ooh, bread. Uh, from the hill, you can see the the farm, farming stuff across the street. You know, but nothing in particular. Looks like a hill that overlooks the quarry. All right. So by now, what time of day is it as we get back to the rest of the group? 
Uh, you guys probably spent about an hour, so it's it's pushing eleven ish in the morning. Well, Pops, what do you want to do? She don't seem like she gives a crap. Do we want to deal with this anyway? Uh, Come back later tonight. And we might we might stop by later tonight. It's not real high on my priority list if if she don't really care none. So we we come by, I guess. What about you, Pinch? These two guys still standing here. He keeps uh, up the silent. If he's still act. feeding them brownies, and yeah, if not, they went back to work. Yeah, well, yeah. after they leave, we'll be talking just amongst ourselves. Oh, it's it's eleven o'clock. I assume Pinch has asked if we can go get lunch by now. He's eaten half of the brownies already. <laughs> First yeah. or second lunch. And now I'm He's not still got pull, them burritos, I'm pulling burritos too. those burritos out of my pocket. Start eating them. Nope, oh, careful. That was one Clyde got to. No, I asked for fresh ones. <laughs> they rinsed them off when they took them they, in the back. They, they just put a fresh wrapper around it. Still tastes like peanut butter. Kind of nutty. Um, yeah, All right, so what I do you mean... want to do till? Do we want to just uh, wait, go back to the inn, relax, and then come back at dinner time? Did somebody say dinner time? We could it's... ask. Do we see anywhere up there that we could sort of uh, hunker down and not be in plain view of the road. I kind of want to ask around and see if anybody what, like else on the is uh back side of the hill? Is that what you're talking about? To where we could see where this person is supposed to be going up to and keep watch on it without being seen from the road. Sure, yeah, there's plenty of locations you can do that. So there's a spot up there where we can wait unless you guys want to go back in town. We could uh, ask around about this uh, trickle, trickle rock cave uh, that we were told about and just try to get some more information about that. Yeah, also try to see if anybody else has uh, complained or noticed any dark figures with stone masks maybe do a little shopping in town as well of the workers present here a couple of them agree that they have seen nobody else in the city though uh, who are you asking that's pretty populated city you just got standing on a box just... like a town crier anybody see yeah. someone with a stone mask at the end uh, the inn is more people traveling, not really townsfolk, and the and the the staff here hasn't heard anything. Well, yeah, the owner. Um, what about Indy? Indy says, you know, I likes to keep my ears and mouth open. I mean, eyes open, but I ain't heard a whole lot about that. I suppose it's a uh, it's true. What what does it mean? I don't know. Beginning to feel like these guys are full of shit. Who's them? What about Bale Gale Curse? I can go get my beard trimmed and uh, find out if he knows anything. Barber, you would think lots of people would talk to him. So I'll head over there and see if, uh, if he knows anything about the Tickle Rock or this. Freckle Rock. 
weird people at night. Fraggle Rock. Mm, okay. Uh... So, uh, have you guys met him, Melandro Gelkirk? Yeah, I go there quite often. I make a big point to tell my brother and dad because they can't grow beards. So I make it a point so to remind them every time I go to my little three hairs that I'm growing. Melandro says, ah, the beard trim that gets paid but doesn't need it. Welcome again, friend. It's especially long today. It's going to need some extra that. work today. You're going to need extra long tweezers. So he, he, he gets out his scissors and he's just like, <laughs> making all these noise, puts lotions and creams on and <laughs> combs your hair for you. So you ever hear about this uh, Trickle Rock place? Tr trickle Rock? Trickle Rock Cave? Well, that's been supposedly got great treasure in it, I heard. But you know how things go. So how trickle come no one else has already done got it if it's so wonderful? Ain't right supposed to know why. Maybe they need more beard hair. Well, how much uh, truth do you think there is to them stories about the quarry? Some masked freak running around. Mm, I suspect that that's probably true. There's all kinds of freaks in this town, I suppose. Don't surprise me. One of them's running around trying to scare off folk at night, trying to make a decent living and make more money. Suppose if it were me and I had people working at night, making extra money and selling slabs, and I didn't want them to, be a good way to stop it, wouldn't it? But who would benefit from the quarry not doing as well? Well, I suppose there's not uh, a competitor right here. A competitor, yeah. Number twelve. And where's this uh, Trickle Rock supposed to be? Trickle Rock's on out the out the. Out that way, he points. <laughs> the DM's trying to find the, the man. I'll get directions from him uh, enough to where I could be able to find it. We're both uh, pretty well traveled over the years, especially if it's between here and the city. We know, we know the, this whole area pretty well. It's, uh, it's out the large path heading into the Sumber Hills. Uh, Northeast? Yeah, northeast. Points into the Sumber Hills, you know, where all the strange stuff's going on. Lightning and storms and ground shaking and vibrating out that way. In the hills. Mm -hmm. I heard there's haunted keeps in them hills, too. All right, so I head back to the rest of the group. Explain, tell them what I, I learned. Is it close to uh, dusk at this point? It can be. 
What's everyone else doing? Uh, Pinch would be back at uh, the place to eat, more than <laughs> likely. There's several places to eat, uh, including the high. Uh, just the pick what he's there. The street. The tavern. No, no, the he'd 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 go where he's uh, where his rooms are right now. Do you mean to the boarding house? No. Oh, here. Yeah. The swinging sword. The swinging sword. Yes. They really would be just kind of wandering out and about the outskirts of town. Just scavenging, scounging for if he finds anything interesting. Mushrooms or plants or anything like that. Or like split the party outskirts of town? Not far. Just Do I get to roll a random encounter for you? Uh, he's just I, out I there taking over cow turds. <laughs> I mean, the encounters are based on a party of five. I can run away. <laughs> uh, so you guys kind of just hang out and, and wander around town and out on the outskirts and pick some mushrooms and until evening. Is that what you guys are waiting on? I'll yeah. go hang out with the guy with the brownies. Yeah. Uh, He'll be look, bossing the kids around. I think he's out of brownies for the day. He's got to wait till morning. I, I don't know. <laughs> Lumina has a couple uh, purchases he wants to make. He needs to uh, restock his arrows, and uh, he actually wants to pick up some uh, studded leather armor that uh, that he saw at the armor shop when he visited there. So he's gonna yeah, he's gonna yeah, go you around. Can, you can easily purchase anything in the in the uh, player's handbook. Including potions of healing and potions of climbing, for those rich individuals that have fifty gold to splurge on. Maybe eventually you guys will be buying them like candy. Potions of climbing, yeah, I spend all my money on that. Hey, they're kind of handy. I mean, you never think they're going to be handy until you need one, and then you're like, "Damn, this is handy! I can climb up this cliff. I don't have to roll nothing." You know what Pinch thinks is handy is this pony to carry his stuff because he can't carry much. You can get a donkey for like eight gold. I can get a pony for thirty. I can get a donkey. Really? Yeah, can look up feed donkey. It? Donkey or get a mule. mastiff for twenty five. Yeah, have you a can mount. feed it brownies <laughs> or burritos. It is. It's not going to cost him to feed the donkey anymore. That's going to cost him to feed himself. A donkey eat grass. Probably uh, less. Yeah. The donkey can graze. So you got a donkey to carry your stuff around town? You just take him from building to building carrying your shit? Oh, you guys, you see Pinch, he's over there at the uh, stables at delivery, and he's, you see him, look at this, look at this mule. No, it's, a, no, it's not a donkey, it's a mule, it's a big old freaking thing. He's looking at it, and he walks right underneath it, and he's looking all around. Jumps up and grabs the rope, pulls its mouth down, looks in its mouth, looks at its teeth. Has no idea what he's looking at. Pinch, you found a girlfriend. Should do it a pinch. <laughs> I'm not sure which one of you has more hair. So, where do you guys, where do your characters find themselves as the sun sets in Red Large? So, uh, Luma and I, and probably Varel at least, would be set up in our little duck blind, right, watching where it, the, being able to see the road and where this guy normally goes. Trying to be inconspicuous with little twigs or brush or something. Kind of like a bush in front of you. And anybody else doing anything? Uh, 
Uh, How about you two being a actual quarry itself? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Go down there where the workers are. Pretend like I'm working. Well, yeah, I'll get night, that. They're not working. Globe. Well, they're not working. No, they're that's scared. The, that's the whole point. That's why they're not working. Is they're scared of the masked individuals. We have it set well, up to where the torches are on, lit, and everything, so it, it would look like they were working. Say again? Yeah. We're going to set some lanterns out and take some picks and start picking away at some of this rock. Don't yeah, know what the hell we're like doing. like we're working. We're... So, I don't know, about 15 minutes or so, you guys are got the torches lit and you're out banging on shit and this Alberta Malika comes storming out of her house waddling down into the quarry and she says why in the red larch are you guys doing she's got her hands working her hips. working you don't have the slightest idea how to mine marble well, show us. Yeah. Show us. Give me a persuasion check. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'd use guidance off, on that. <laughs> first off, and I have no idea how to mine marble either. Don't get me wrong. But first off, you have to do this first thing first. And uh, and she shows you. She she gives you a lesson. And, and then you got to move these heavy, heavy, heavy stones that are dusty and dirty and put them in that wagon there. And then you got to wheel them this way. Hold on. I'll carry the torch, she says. Come on, Pinch. Hold up your end. So you have persuaded her that you guys are going to work for the evening. Correct? Yeah. And you sure. guys up on the cave are watching, right? All right. The guys up yeah, kind of. uh, on the hill that are watching need to roll a stealth check. At disadvantage, might I add you, because this is some funny-ass shit. <laughs> Pinch trying to carry marble. <laughs> Both of them. Jangling and Pinch trying to carry heavy objects and mining and stuff. The DC's not that hard to... Oh, so oh I... those are bad. The famous last words. Oh, v Viril, you're up there too in the in the duck blind? Yeah. <laughs> you mean it's, it's just Jangling and the, the two littlest guys are down here. Yeah. Yep. So, Doing the hard so... labor. <laughs> so... The two of you, including, uh, what's her passive perception? Let's see what her, uh, do it. oh, do it. yeah, it's a 10. So she hears the giggling coming up from the hills and she stops and she looks down at you guys and she says, I can't see up there, but is that a man in a mask giggling at us? She points to the way you guys are already heard it and recognize the giggle. Clouds of smoke spewing out from where we were unable to hide. She's like, quick, go investigate with your weapons. And she hands you a torch and pushes you towards the, the quarry edge. It's like to to pinch it's like it might as well be 15 feet tall you know to the hill edge you know almost sheer straight up damn should have, should have thought about second story work <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you get that till fourth anyways uh i think it's third level you pick archetype oh yeah third She's like, well, are you going to go see? Oh, uh, well, of course. 
that's what we're doing here. So I pinch grabs one of these lanterns. He's not gonna get his drift globe out here. Thieving red large people. Bunch of carnies living around here. <laughs> so, so uh, you guys are uh, are watching from the hill, right? And and you can you can see uh, Jangalang. He takes a break and he uh, he kind of pulls out his violin and he's like, wee 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 wee. Just makes a quick couple of sounds. And uh, as Pinch is trying to figure out if he wants to climb up this cliff, and uh, uh, Malika, uh, Albera Malika is trying to boost him up. And she's like, don't push on my belly. And Dylan trying to help him up the cliff and shit. There's a hot torch, and he's all dusty and kind of weak from carrying stones for the last couple of hours. And uh, Jangalane comes over, and he's trying to think if he wants to help or not and he's watching and and uh and everyone notices like one of the slabs of marble starts to glow like you know like the face that's facing the hill you know uh, it starts to glow and uh and it it gets a little brighter and then a little brighter and then it stays bright for a little while then it kind of fades back down and then you see on the slab, it looks like somebody has written, you guys suck on the slab. <laughs> In glowing letters. What the hell? How, how is, uh, uh, what's her name reacting to this? She's like, why? It's, it's gotta be the masked men. They have to be doing it. I've never seen anything like that. I think it's just a natural species of glowing marble. It says you guys. Species. It's, it's a, a species of marble. It's like a, it's like a cloud. You know, when you look at a cloud, you see a, a bush and a bus. And you guys suck on the marble. Just nice, <laughs> nice, oh, yeah, that's... nice courier type of, of font on it. You guys <laughs> suck. It's totally naturally occurring. Yeah. Well, at least we know what our name is now. You guys suck, Aventure Park. I threw in the mystery <laughs> machine thinking you might grab a hold of it, but it's already been done. <laughs> well, you guys uh, think on uh, how do you guys want to continue as... Uh, we, take the a... guys that suck, are going to go kick some ass. You guys that suck. Well, on that note, we're going to take a 10-minute break because I have to go pee-pee and get a refresher of my water. Water, Probably why I have to go pee-pee because I drank all my water. But I am going to start a timer, and we're going to set it for 21.39, and, uh, and we're going to be back. So come back in about 10 minutes. We'll be all refreshed, and uh, we're going to continue this charade. So uh, we'll be back here shortly. Give us a break. See you guys in just a little bit.
All right, we are back. And uh, so you guys are out investigating the quarry. And we're going to say it is... Uh, why is it this hovering? Oh, there it goes. It is the next morning, 12 a.m. in the morning. And uh, uh, Milico, uh, she's already gone. She's like, I've, I've got a, I've got an early morning to get the crew going. So she. She wanders off and leaves you guys, you know, holding the picks and the stuff and the torches and and all by yourself, by yourselves, so you guys can talk amongst yourselves. Well, at least jangling and uh, pinch can. So, what do you think was with the creepy? I think it. I think it's those guys play a joke on it. Well, What's that? We only really know one thing. And that's that we suck. Yes, that's right. We know who we are now, though. There's no doubt about it. So have we seen prophecy. anything in the last several hours? It was a prophecy. Not nothing uh, brother than those two schmoes out there do. You think if somebody was going to um, stand on the hill and watch them, uh, they would just die laughing, too. And you think it would be hilarious. That you, there's no way you could miss anyone standing on the hill watching them work. Or try to work. <clears throat> so, Pinch, I don't think we make very good miners. So, yeah, Pinch well, we and, and Jangling, you guys are like, you know, you, you got your picks and stuff out of this little storage niche, storage kind of cut out in the, in, the, in the quarry, right? Like a storage closet that's got picks and all that kind of crap in it. And, uh, Pinch, you, uh... You notice, uh, like towards the back of the back of this little cave, if you want to call it or whatever, there's some like white sand on the ground They're near the back of the quarry, back of the where the, the, the storage cave where all the tools and stuff uh, are kept. You know, okay. You're like putting the tools away and you're looking around. And you, now you have a lit torch in your hand because you were out with it. Yeah. And uh, and you and you look and you see some white sand on the ground in the back of the cave. Does it taste like sand? A little taste? Yeah, but it's it's you're like looking around. It doesn't look like quarry dirt or sand. You know, it's like out of place. It's like what the hell would this be? This How much dusty, is there? dusty gray kind of you know quarry dust everywhere, and then there's like beach sand. And there's what a couple of cups of it, or like a no, couple just of a, just a few sprinkles of it, like one little nugget about the size of a quarter. You're like, what the hell? Let's search the quarry, the sides. Marble termites. Marble termites. Well, Pinch and uh, Jangalang are probably the only ones that know yeah. of this currently. Yeah, Jangling is gonna see, uh, look around, and see if he can find out where the source is for the sand. So you yeah, like to look at Jangling and start like, moving say, stuff around and investigating. Can you right, play it? Can you play anything on that? Check. Can you play anything on that fiddle that actually makes people want to come here? <laughs> so. Pinch like pulls a, uh, a, a you know a shovel. Let's look back here, and he pulls a shovel, and like the whole like freaking side thing goes and collapses towards the back of the cave, like all the shovels and stuff. And you guys have to like run out of the the cave. Oh shit! To you know, because it's loud. Now you, you done it. Get squished. So you guys are standing out, and a cloud of dust kind of rolls out of the cave. You're like. Uh, the investigation failed, obviously. 
But you guys hear a big what? clamoring, clanging of of tools and equipment and voices screaming and, and commotion coming from uh, what would be like directly underneath of you guys. God damn it, Pinch! Should we go rescue the babies? Well, uh, Luna probably, you know, thinks that, uh, is worried they're in trouble and have been attacked. So he like takes off and starts running down there. Well, I mean, Lumina could just take the the hop down the quarry and be right there. I mean, they're almost directly below you. Yeah, or you so could like run hops. all the way out to the road and then back around. No, nah, he like slides down the quarry, like the side of it, and like draws his swords as he's sliding down and is all ready. And then they just like come running well, out. This is the envision that he has when he jumps off this quarry edge. That's what's going to happen, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, roll me an acrobatics check, and let's see how well it does happen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So it's more than a, you know, 10-foot drop, but you kind of hop, slide, and catch onto another rock and step off and kind of do a little spin and land on another lower platform and uh, land right next to Pinch and Jangling with your weapons out. And they, they're kind of startled at you at first. They're like, huh. You know, you didn't surprise them, but they didn't expect you to have weapons drawn. They're like, oh, oh. So I'll come to the edge with my wep- with my bow out, watching both the quarry, and then I'm also keeping an eye on the road as well. He's like pointing his bow around. There's some sand down here. It's down here underneath a bunch of stuff now, but it's down here. Sand? You were you were that, attacked. You were attacked by sand. I don't understand. No, J- Jangalang. He backed into the tool shelf or something. I don't know. Oh, I see. And he puts it. He looks disappointed as he puts his swords away. <laughs> pinch calls the cave in. Pinch, pinch my ass. Well, Lumina, you kind of like that. You kind of let your uh, your dark vision, like, you know, have a uh, pinch hold the torch away, and you let your dark vision adjust, and uh, you can uh, make out uh, towards the back of the cave. This big pile of tools have slid over and landed on the back of the cave, and you can see an outline of a door in the cave wall. Well, uh, you guys are probably going to get fired from the job you don't have anyway. So let's go check out that that door that you. Well, see, that's the whole reason why I was trying to get that stuff out of the way. Excuse me. Oh, you mean the door I found back behind all the tools? Well, I shoved you into the rack. It's intentional because you was in the way. I told you we needed to get that stuff out of there. Let's go check it out. And. Uh, Lumina will motion to uh, the guys watching up top and, and motion for them to come down. So I'll wake up. My, hey, Pops, come on. They found something. <laughs> Once he's awake, I'll, I'll uh, work my way down. All right, if I must. Actually, I'll tell uh, before. Uh, no, never mind. I'll I'll uh, I'll just try and slide down with uh, Soleil. Pinch, I accidentally took you out of the combat tracker. So if you could apply your effect to yourself uh, again, whatever Sorry. stuff. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, because that's not what I wanted to do. So you guys start uh, moving around in this uh, this cave. It's a tool cave and stuff. But in the back, carefully, like, hidden back there is a, is a door. It's a, it's a wooden door, but it 
kind of faux painted to look like the back wall, you know? And the tools kind of knocked it open a little bit. You know, it's kind of creeped open a little bit. That's why you can see the outline. But when you walk up to it, you can see that it's it's dark in there. And you had to clean, you know, move out some shovels and stuff. So do we have a marching order? Is that still stand on this table? Let's see, party sheet. Order. I thought no. I had a uh, an action, uh, an effect called lucky that rerolled the ones. That's automatic. It's automatic? Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So who's who's in the front? Who, who who's going through the door first? Or we're setting we're up inside. Orders, It'll so. be Soleil first. And then Then Lumina, right behind him. And then Pinch in the middle. And Dan. Um we will try to be side by side when we can. And it's gonna be pretty narrow. I'll be behind Pinch. And then Vareel. See if you drag tokens directly to the map and it just plops them on there, it breaks your line of sight. Because it's got to hold shift. Of, hold shift the whole time and then move them. Right. As a DM, if you when you're moving a token, if you hold shift, it will not do the line of sight for them. Even if you're grabbing the helmet from the combat tracker and dragging them onto the map, does it still work? I, I don't know. I drag them one at a time because in in Savage Worlds they don't work if you drag them on from the yeah and on the like party all, sheet since I don't use it for combat I just drag them from the watch order and then you don't it doesn't have line of sight tokens any of that I just drag the party. well there's like four different ways that the people do it yeah <laughs> yeah on the that's not what I'm doing I'm, I'm dragging you guys onto the map but I drug the whole helmet. And I didn't try holding shift, and then obviously it broke line of sight because it put everybody outside the little cave tunnel. It's like, pfft. so I'm redrawing. This this is a map that we don't but have. Like you can that. always just put yeah. us where we start, and then turn off, and then on line of sight before you share the map with us. Oh, okay. Let me do that, and let me share the map. So this, uh... <clears throat> nope, all I got is black screen. Damn it. I thought you did something last time to fix that. We're missing Jangalang. <laughs> Wouldn't say we were missing him. I don't know that I did there anything. Is. Let me unlock the tokens. Yeah, Turn last time you, you did something and it and you started working again. There's a giant black I, spear I coming out I of this wall. Disconnected and reconnected. Yeah, it's a it's a big spear. Don't walk into it. So the door, you know, you kind of push open the door. It's not stuck or anything, but uh, just uh, you can see beyond that. Uh, do you guys have a light source still? Drift globe. I'm using dark vision. Dark vision. Dark vision. Everybody so drift globe lit for those that don't have dark vision. Uh, it will be as soon as I get back in there. So no, you can just say yes. I mean, yes. There's no effect that actually lights the drift globe. Just say it. Just say. It. Uh, Not yet. So the so the tunnel ahead of you is is muddy, uh, and it it kind of looks like it. it goes downhill a little bit like way beyond your your vision can see and uh just beside this wooden door is a is a wooden coffer it sits on the floor by the door and uh <coughs> beside besides the coffer is a heap of damp beach sand 
uh, in which uh, the ends of torches protrude. This is where they put their torches out when they leave. So I'm going to take a look at this whole setup here and see, is there cobwebs at all? Is it dusty? Does it look like it's been used in a while? Uh, there's muddy footprints in the floor, and there's no cobwebs. It does, does, does look like it has been used recently. Do we find there? Including the yeah. unlit torches in the in the sand next to the door in the wooden coffer that's next to that. What's a coffer? It's like a box, right? You can give him a lozenge. Give the coffer a lozenge. <laughs> oh, is that one of your coffins? Coffer. So you guys are moving on? What could be going on down here? We don't care if it's coughing. We're just moving on. Yep. So it looks like they've been here recently. So maybe it's odd that she wouldn't say anything. I wonder if this is, is she something having anything? to do with her or what? Yeah, she Who's might the not know about it. it What's that? What is a coffer? It's a little small box, box right? small box. It's got a lid on What's it. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box, bitch? Tangling thing. Burnt you guys torches. just walked past this box? Didn't open it? I so thought you said it was it? filled with burnt torches and sand. No, the there's a heap of damp sand from which the ends of torches protrude. Oh, that's not the Beside coffer. the coffer. Okay. Uh, when Jangalang opens the coffer up, a loud flash erupts from the coffer, burning his eyebrow. No, I'm kidding. It is full of torches, unlit torches, new torches, and some flint and steel. So we could set a Pinch, trap by stealing torch. all their torches. Yeah. You'd think whoever's coming down here, probably mm -hmm. all of them do not have dark vision. As everyone's camera goes blank for a second. <laughs> right. I was wondering where everybody went. I like the now that it doesn't show the black thing on uh, on the... Uh, it shows the token. That's nice. Well, I put the token there, obviously. but I shall point out the giant spear from the wall. Yeah. Make sure that nobody runs into it. The uh, just so it doesn't bug you guys all night, that arrow says door to surface. <laughs> That's what it's pointing at. Uh, this way to the great egress. It's pointing at Chester Copperpot. Chester Copperpot. <laughs> oh, from robots. From uh, Goonies. Goonies. What was the big guy from robots called? That rolled around. Wasn't it copper pot? Go ahead, Sila, go ahead. Pinch kind of gooses him. You guys moving in? Looks like you're slowly trying to. All right, yep, so we'll move on down. Moving on down. He has, a, you have the, the drift globe lit, correct? Yeah. So no, I don't want to be in here in a dark disadvantage. What is it? Uh, what's the drift globe? It's 60 feet of light, isn't it? You still scared That's of the dark, Selay? That's a bright light. We don't need that. You can't see that far anyways. <laughs> Because of the tunnel. Uh, yeah. uh oh. What's what's the lay see? Sees that it opens up, huh? Up ahead, you can start to see that it opens into a larger cavern. So I'll make the motion to Veril that it's going to change shortly. Yeah, as you guys. Uh, start making your way the the ground gets less and less muddy until you get into 
start to see into the cavern and you can see that it looks pretty dry in there. So I'm going to start moving a little quieter, trying to uh, stay stealthy as of, as we start approaching the, the entrance here. Yeah, same thing. Stealthy. Everybody is. And of course, everybody comes a... stomping. Everybody yeah. just stomps right if, on up there. If everybody is, then give me a group stealth check. In the, in I've the got chat. my bow. Give me a group stealth check with your bow. You want it in the chat or in the uh, tower? Yeah, yeah, you guys can see it. I like to, when it's a group, let you guys see who screwed you up. Me. Again. Not a stealthy guy. Not till I get past without trace. Let me fix something on the overlay real quick. Oops. <clears throat> that. So slow. Sometimes I wish I would have accidentally started with OBS Studios instead of Streamlabs, but what can you do? It's an easy switch. No, it's, it's easy not. Peasy. Yeah, it is. Not with all my freaking scenes. Dude, you ain't got a clue. It's so easy, I'll show you, and you'd be like, oh, man, I should have done this a long time ago. So you're going to, what about all my assets from Streamlabs? As in, as in the frames, your alerts? And the, no, the frames and all that stuff. That's all from Streamlabs. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think there's a way you can get that, but I don't know. Probably, but we'll I would have it. to rebuild all of them. It's not. It's not easy. Like it's easy. Like a whole day, easy. rabbit hole. All right, do you want to keep moving now? Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me, as you guys look in here, so this, this wide, irregular shaped cavern has a floor of smooth bedrock, uh, damp dirt and stone with tree roots protruding uh, here and there make up the walls. So you, it smells earthy in here, a little damp, kind of moldy. Uh, and you can see, you know, off to the to the east, you see a, uh, a stone slab door, and it has a rusty pull ring uh, on it. And uh, by the door, there's like some, you know, hooks on the wall. And you can see uh, there's also some water skins. And on those hooks, you can see some cloaks, like hanging on the wall over here. Next to the door, but other than that, the 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 room appears to be pretty much empty, just like a. What well, the cloaks look like? Uh, they're they're pretty uh, old, worn out kind of cloaks, well used, anyways. And there's a a, a couple of water skins just kind of leaning up or hanging on hooks down there too. Before we open that door uh lumina wants to take a, a minute and look around this room and see if he can figure out what they whoever's coming in here might use it for this is a pretty pretty big room for them to just ignore it and i'm going to be walking around the edge the perimeter of the room just looking for anything out of the ordinary so as you guys are uh <clears throat> kind of checking out this cavern stuff occasionally like pebbles and, and dirt and dust kind of like drift down from the ceiling like you know every now and then like loose pebbles and dirt can stuff fall down from the ceiling uh, which is can we tell what it is are there 20, more sturges put up no, there's no Sturgis. It's 20 foot up. Uh, give yeah. me a nature check. It'd be lit then. 
Vero's lit. Always. You guys think it's it's gravity that's causing the pebbles and stuff to fall from the ceiling? Uh, but something's causing the ceiling to, like, shake a little bit, you think. There's something up there. Maybe yeah, there's we know where there. we are. There, there's something above this cavern. Well, you did head south from the mine. About well, you might be under some of the town. About 200 yards. So you're definitely... The road. Well, I've got the map behind my head. <laughs> Any of these yeah. cloaks small? I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at it uh, behind your head, too, with my cursor there. It's right there. That's where you're at. No one can see it but me, but... Here, put these cloaks on, guys. Put these cloaks on. It's important. I know it. Vinch has one on. It's like three feet too long. He's like, put them on. I hitch it up and he's like rolling up, up the, my belt. He's like rolling up the sleeves and shit. They just look like regular cloaks. Yeah. Cloakers. Yeah. And they're different, you know, they're different color cloaks and stuff. They're not nothing. Not, they're not uniform anyways. The hell I'll throw one on. And the water skin is just, it's half full of water. Strap one over me and take one of these torches and light it up. Put the drift globe away. And take a torch. You know, when in when in water deep, do as. I want to check out this door. Is it locked? Uh, you don't even see a lock on the door. How, how are you <laughs> checking out the door? Are you just looking at to see if it's locked, or are you looking at any other yeah, wanna, craftsmanship of the uh, door? I want to listen. Listen to see if I can hear anything on the other side, and just check the handle, see if it's locked. So you you put your ear against this cold, hard stone slab, and you think, "Wow, it might be pretty thick," because you don't hear jack on the other side. Uh, and you look down, and there's just a rusty pull ring on the on the door. There's no lock. You ready to go, guys? Yeah, pull that door open there, Hercules. Jangling will grab a hold of that, that ring and with both hands and just pull on it. <laughs> and like, how hard do you pull on it? You want to give me athletics check to see? Yeah, he's like putting his whole body weight into pulling it. Leaning back. Pitch helps him out. Oh. oh. That was close. Oh. Let's see it was well almost pinch. a two. Let's see how well Pinch does. On athletics? Uh, yeah. yeah. Not bad, not bad. So you guys uh, easily... Uh, trip backwards over yourselves and fall on the ground as this door is so engineered perfectly that with the slightest pull it swings open easily <laughs> so you guys are like Gah! and this heavy like one foot thick stone door comes flying open from them yanking on it and kind of just slams in the full open position like Whoosh, and some pebbles and stuff fall from the ceiling and from the little bit of gonna motion. Get and, up from uh, the ground, uh, brush himself off, and look at Pinch and say, "We got to do all the heavy lifting around here." I don't know why. Yeah, that's why we make the big bucks, right? Ah, so uh, let's take a look inside here. So down uh, about 60 or so feet into the uh, into this nice carved uh, tunnel, like 90 degree pitch perfect, it slopes down slightly. And uh, you guys see uh, like two stone reliefs down there of stern dwarves and chainmail 
and and they're carrying battle axes. They face each other across the tunnel. Uh, the carvings stand out from the passage walls, and they have gaps around them. So you think they could be doors, and then the passage continues uh, past them. So I I say, hey pops, and I turn around like, where the hell? Oh, hey, you know, a motion for him to come up. And... Have you ever heard, you've been here forever? Uh, were there ever dwarves around here? You see, dwarves are kind of like rats. They've been everywhere. And you never know what you're going to pick up when you're around them. So seeing something dwarven built underneath anywhere is not much of a surprise. Something back here. So they answered no. Answer is I have no idea. So Pinch wanders on down and squeezes through the the left door there that's got the dwarven reliefs on it. I guess we're going that way. No, I'm just checking it. Do out. we see anything in this big room ahead of us? And what are the things on the floor? Uh, those aren't uh, on the floor. They're actually like coffered ceiling kind of like impressions up in the ceiling, like. Like coffered ceilings, not coughing. Look, don't cough. Coffered, like where you big know, spikes come out, slam into. Everybody it. knows what coffered means. They're like recessed, and then there's stone around. It's mm -hmm. decorative, you know, like pretty stone. Uh, are you guys like going in and checking them out, or are you are you going? I'm in? looking at the floor. Do we see any kind of tracks the, or any kind of? Uh, the floor seems scrapes or anything. Pretty. Uh, Pretty clean, but yeah, there are some muddy footprints here and there, back and forth, different directions. Which way do they seem to be the most? Uh, down, down the main middle, mainly. All right, it looks like they mo mostly go through these main doors. Do we want to barge on in, or do we want to go around? Let's go straight up the middle. That's why you're in the Keep front, going. I guess. You get paid the big bucks. And uh, Lumina says, I recommend stepping where the uh, the other footprints are. So is this a hallway or is this a room? Uh, you, the, it the kind of appears to be another continuation of the hallway. Well, you're talking this way? Right. The long hallway that's only 20 feet wide. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be a room. So there's footprints that are visible? Mm -hmm. The yep. quarry mode or something? So I'm, Do they seem to wander back and forth or are they pretty straight? They back and forth. Yeah. I'm watching, looking for any kind of signs of anything. I'm going to switch from my... Uh, bow to my axe. Okay. Uh, Lumen yeah, is up walking. At, up yeah, ahead, walking. you can see another door. I'm following close behind, but uh, making sure to step where these existing footprints have stepped. Yep. They're kind of all over the place they're not in any you don't see that they look like they've been avoiding pit traps or anything uh pinch give me a uh perception check tower no i'll tell you if i want it in the tower yeah so pinch has got you got your drift globe out right yeah uh so so back here at the door, when he realized that we didn't need the cloaks and stuff, he'd put the torch out because he doesn't want to have his hands tied up with the torch. Right, and you could just let the drift globe go. Right, and it will float behind you. So you 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 stop and you're looking up at this coffered ceiling, and uh, and just about that time, you you uh, hear uh, this, uh, 
Soleil stop and he says, there's a, there's a window in that door up ahead. You know, Soleil sees a little, a little window in the door and, uh, And let's see. Yeah, uh, Pinch sees like around the square edge of the coffered ceiling is rust. He's like shines his light up there. He's like, it's rust. Look at that rust. Yeah. And, uh, And we have one of these. Initiative. I got the encounter going, so it's going to lag the table out for a second. Ooh, lots of uh, error messages. Tokens. Always. All right, so... Let me read this real quick. Uh, so from the ceiling, a cage falls out of the ceiling loudly and noisily. It, uh, Soleil, you hear a little bit of commotion coming from the other side of the door, like a clank. And then out of the ceiling, a cage falls and blocks the passage. <laughs> And, uh, and we have Jangalang gets to react first. So what's Jangalang going to do? Well, he's going to spin around and see what the hell's in that cage. It's a, it's a, it's a cage that's looks like it was up in the ceiling that's fallen out. And, uh, it's iron. I think that's what there's nothing in it though. Rust. Currently there is nothing in it. No. And there's a heavy chain on the top of the cage. Because Where did you say it was? Uh, did I not turn it on? Right there? Yeah, it's behind us. Does yeah. the cage go all the way to the ceiling? Yes. So it's from the floor to the ceiling. How tall is the ceiling? Uh, 10 feet. So it's about a 10 foot by 10 foot cage. And a 10 foot by 10 foot hallway. And so it's a 10 foot cube. Um, Jangling isn't going to know what to do, so he's going to take the dodge action. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> he's like, what the hell? Yeah. He's like, what the fuck just happened? Oops. I pushed it. I didn't mean to push it. Soleil. So I'm going to motion to. Veril and Luma, that I heard something ahead, and I'm going to move forward. I'm still watching carefully. Um, that's why I'm only going half speed, and also still trying to be somewhat stealthy, like I'm a hunt. I'm hunting something. 
I'm hunting wabbits. I have... Be very, very quiet. Should I bother with the stealth roll? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, just moving quietly, I guess. Pinch. So, Pinch says, I think we should run. And he runs to all the way to there he uses his action to dash to get there i think that's 50. yep and then he uses cunning action and takes no, he doesn't. He's not going to hide him in this hallway. Uh, he's just hit, headed for the door as quick as he can. All right, so... Where is it at? So, Jangling, give me a dexterity saving throw in the chat, please. Oh, I can, I could have pushed it to you. What? Ooh. Why'd you have advantage? Um, we should dodge it. Oh, oh, yeah, he's dodging. Dodging. Oh, nice. Well, a 10 still does not make the saving throw. Uh, and if the DC is a 15, did he fail by five or more with a 10? Yeah, yeah, yep. So a cage falls out of the ceiling. And uh, and you try to jump out of the way, except you don't get far enough out of the way, and the cage lands on you and does, uh, whoops, dragging the map around, and does uh, 10 points of damage as it lands on Oof. your torso and pins you to the ground. So you are are uh, are prone and restrained. Why didn't they give me those effects? I don't I don't understand. Bastards. Who did this conversion? I want to have a word with them. Was it Casius? So probably. Prone and restrained. If I can spell. Since when can you pin effects into a story? Can you do that? You can uh, do can it you? in the combat tracker on the cage that he so kindly added with the save and the damage on it. He could have put oh, restraint up could. there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something went wrong with my pro stream. I don't know why. It's having an error. Let's look at the stream here. Oh, uh, it's up. It's yeah. showing my 10 wounds. Is it? I yep. guess it is yeah. working. Or maybe because I pushed the button, it's showing your 10 wounds. And uh, another cage falls out of the ceiling. And uh, 
and just misses Varil. Clang! Right behind him. Lumina. Alright. Uh, I uh, hear these come down and I glance back and see uh, Jang Lang trapped under this thing. Um, how, how heavy do these cages look? Like, Do I think I would be able to lift this on my own? Uh, you, they, you, you're not sure. They could be made out of aluminum. You're, you're not quite sure just glancing at them. They sounded kind of heavy, and when it hit him and it pinned him to the ground, but, you know, he's been working in the, in the, in the stone mine, working in the stone mine, so he could be a little weak. You don't, you don't know. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, then he's going to, like, just grab onto this cage and, and try to lift it himself. All right, well, give me a, uh, what's it saying here? A strength check. I'll let you use athletics. So you're like, Ugh! and uh, you lift it just enough for uh, jangling to uh, crawl out. East or west, jangling? Um, towards the doors, uh, west. So you crawl out, and the cage gets slammed down onto the ground. Kapush. That was your action. Right, that makes sense. And uh, I say to Veril, uh, uh, I, I know it'll be traumatic, but you'll have to turn into a rat and go through the cage. <laughs> and then I will, I will turn and use my uh, my move to head towards the doors. So up to there. All right. And. Curse slam! Another cage falls. Uh, I don't know who drew this, but it looked like they just added those doors in, didn't? Doesn't it? Like, let's just stick these doors in anywhere. Because if you're drawing a map, either draw the doors open or closed. Don't draw. I mean, just draw them closed. You know, when you're drawing a map, just just draw the doors closed. This open stuff. What what can I do with that? What? Gee. Yeah. So another cage slams down. Kaboosh! Blocking your path now. And, uh... Pain in the buttocks. My uh, open on turn, I love, but you you got to prep it. <laughs> Very ill. All right. Um, these cages, are the holes big enough for a tiny creature to pass through? Yeah, I would, I would think so. It doesn't spe okay. specify that specifically, but... Uh, so Veyril is going to give a very dirty look to Lumina uh, for forcing him to do this. Uh, but he is actually going to turn not into a rat because he despises rats and being in cages. Uh, so instead, he is going to turn into a cat. We'll see if that worked. Uh, can you describe this cat? So this cat is a uh, kind of old looking Maine Coon with wispy, uh, uh, smoky looking fur, you know, gray fur, uh, kind of looks old. And uh, what was that cat's name from Baldur's Gate? The flying cat. So, I would argue uh, that a Maine Coon isn't tiny. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, they're fur. Fluffball. Yeah. 
And uh, as a cat, I, that was my bonus action to wild shape into cat form. Uh, and then I am going to move, and I have a move. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to take the dash action. And get to. I don't want to know if I want. Screw it. I'm going to go right through everybody and get through to there. All right, one second. It doesn't like going through the door, but you can get through the door. Um, yeah. I'm going to say climbing through the cage actually slows you down a little bit. So you're okay in the middle of the cage, getting ready to climb out of the other side. It's just slowed you down by five feet. All right, Jangalang, you're like, you crawled out. Uh, barely, uh, you're still prone on the ground. You're no longer restrained. What do you want to do? First of all, I was going to use half of his movement to stand up. All right. Um, all right. Are there doors on these cages, and are they open? No, there's no doors on the cages. There are four wall, five walls. Two, four walls and a roof on them. Cage. They fall out of the ceiling. Okay. So there's no bottoms to them. Correct. That's how he was able to lift it up and you could slide out. If there was so a I got bottom, crushed by one of the sides. Then you would be like french fries right now. Um, well then uh he's going to Well, he can't he can't go through the cage, so um Uh, you could try to lift the cage move. up and crawl under it again. I don't know if you want. you're trying to get under the cage. He's going to move and dash, so that'd be 45. To there. Another. Yeah. Uh, yep, there. That's weird how that does that. I clicked it, you token moved, and then you moved it more. And I clicked it again, and it went back to the starting point. I was like, what? Yeah, he's going to move and dash there then. All right. Uh, Lumen is going to move up uh, and uh, get ready to lift this cage. Um, but uh, he had some, some difficulty with it last time, couldn't lift it very far. So uh, he gets gets close to it and uh, says, uh, Soleil, come up and give me a hand with this cage so we can all cr crawl underneath. So you're going to move right. up and, and ready to lift, basically? Yeah, basically, okay. yeah. Ready your action to lift. I lift things uh, up and I put them down. I want to go ahead and go on in and what do I see, if anything? So when you when you like slink in as a cat, you do see a. Uh, let me uh, let me move you in so you can see the room. Uh, let me describe this room. This big square chamber has been hewn out of the rock. In the center of the chamber's west wall uh, that you're coming through is a stone door that has a narrow viewing slit. Beside the door is a set of iron bars bolted into the wall about three feet above the floor. Ten oiled chains are secured to the bars leading up to a hole bored in the ceiling. Another solid stone door is in the middle of the east wall. An eight foot tall rectangular stone stands upright in the room's center. The stone has an inscription on it that's hard to read from a distance. 
At the foot of the stone, a small human is pinned face down by rocks placed on top of his arms, legs, and back. He is barefoot and wears ragged clothes. Uh, standing in front of the ten chains is a half-orc that you recognize. It's Grun. Grun. Hey, it's my buddy. As you look up at him and go. The pickle guy? Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's pulling a chain off or getting ready to. Uh, then I want to. Uh... Hiss at him. Well, I want to get him away from there. I don't want him to trap anymore, you know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop my cat form. I don't like being... Bonus action? Is that or is bonus it... or free? No, I think it's a, It's actually... A, it might be a bonus. I thought, I thought it was action. a free action. I think so. This, you just drop concentration, don't you? It's, it's not, not a concentration, not concentration spell. Oh, that's right. It's a bonus action. It's a bonus action on your turn. I think a moon druid might be able to do it for free, but I don't remember. But Sven reminded me, I, I made a mistake earlier. I should not have been able to turn in to, to Wild Shape as a bonus action. That's a moon druid feature. It should oh, have been my action. It's an action, okay. Well, yeah, all you did yeah. is kind of move, so it was run. Uh, so I'm going to use my bonus action to D shift. You took your action to get through the rest of the way this round, so we'll make up for it. Okay. And then you D shift. All right. So so Grun looks at you like, <laughs> like you you know hey, be dude, here. What's up? He's like, you're Where's no be here. To pickles are that way. And he points the way you came. You, you'll you no be here. I look down at myself, but, but I am here. Uh, you, you, you're you not, you're not supposed to be here. You, you have to go. Me make you go. Uh, okay, we'll lift up the cages. We'll leave. Uh, he looks confused. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, we didn't know well, that we were supposed to be in here. When, Just lift when, the cages up. Uh, when, and you have a, when you have an action, we can see if you can persuade him right. to do what you want. Soleil. It's hoping to distract him from pulling any more yeah, cages. Yeah, he, he, he is a little distracted at the moment, so he hasn't pulled anything yet. So I'm carefully creeping down this hallway my axe at the ready, watching and waiting for anything to happen. And this whole flood of people go parading, flying, stampeding past me. So I will stole yeah. my axe and just sort of saunter <laughs> up. <laughs> I thought you had a great sword. Is it a great axe? Oh, I may be wrong character. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, Everybody it's... ran right by him. Chult. <laughs> Fuck! It is a sword. Yeah, I have a great sword. Anyway, um, and it is a great Both sword. Great. It's not a piece of crap sword like someone else's. Um, so I'll, I'll <laughs> it's move up. It's a great up. sword, man. So you're going to move then, up uh, and, and try to help him lift? I'll well, the DCs, him. the DCs are 15, so whoever has the higher strength can roll it with advantage. And you guys are trying to lift it up enough to get underneath completely or inside of it? Underneath past it, right? Yeah, I assume that we're going to like lift it up and kind of 
hold and it for everybody So you're going to lift it up and hold it over your head, and then other people are going to go through? Okay, yeah. I'm cool with that. I'm just kind of trying to figure out how you two are going to get. Through. Right. And then once everybody else gets through, then we'll kind of like pass through. and. So 25 is, is not a problem. So you guys lift it up for your actions. What are you what are you doing, Sully? Are you trying to move under it? You're holding it up. I was just being weird and sliding oh. halfway in. Oh, the, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I I'm holding to, it up. Yeah, I don't want to stack the tokens because, you know, habit. <laughs> Anything else? You're holding it up? Oh, no, yeah, that's my full action. Uh, and I, I moved along. All right, so... Grun like looks through the peephole and he sees that they got the cage lifted up and he looks at you and uh, he takes off running. He is going to provoke if you care. Provoke how? Uh, is he you... within melee of me? Yeah, he's right next to you. Let's see. All right. Uh, I, I suppose I can take a swipe at him with my scimitar. Did you have your scimitar drawn? No, I wouldn't. So you could take a swing at him with your hand, or you can kick him or something, but you can't draw nah. a weapon as a reaction. Nah, nah. So you look at him and he's like, he doesn't have any weapons. Hey, out, hey, hey, I want some pickles. He's like, uh, you have to, you have to leave. You, you're not supposed to be here. I told you, just open the cages you, and we'll go out the other way. You, you go or the bringers of woe will come. As uh, he okay. runs across he's and rhyming uh, and, here and opens this door. Uh, let's see, what's his move at 30? And uh, he runs through the door, and uh, he hasn't closed it yet because he can't. But he's about to, the door he just came out of. So he runs, opens the door, and goes in, you know, it's like, and you could see that he's getting ready to swing the door closed in his in his six seconds. Pinch! So the, ga the 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 two brothers have the uh, cage up over their head. Pinch, with a blood-curdling scream, goes running to there. And through the door, he's going to use a bonus action to dash. And the whole time he's screaming... You guys suck! <laughs> I realized I didn't have what? Grun turned on, so that's why you didn't see him standing next to you. Sorry. Okay, that you makes sense. Suck. Yeah, now so you yell that as like an insult or a battle cry? As a battle cry. Okay, just making sure. So Yeah, so uh, my action, I am going to hold an action. Um... I'm going to get my bow out and anything that moves, I'm going to shoot. All right. So there's a, uh, there's a person on this slab of rock right here. Did you guys get that description? Did it make any sense to you? Yeah. Was... Yeah. I just haven't been able to, to do anything. It's eight feet up, isn't it? Or is it, was an eight feet wide slab of rock? Eight, eight feet wide. Let's, let's look at okay. that again. Cause it, when I read it, it Wasn't seemed the guy a little being held down by rocks or something. There we go. Yeah. So it's a big square chamber, a shoot out of rock. In center of the chamber in the west wall is a stone door, blah, blah, blah. The middle, uh, an eight-foot-tall rectangular stone stands upright in the room center. The stone has an inscription on it and hard to read from the distance. At the foot of the standing stone, it's small. Oh, oh so it's it's actually here. Is where the... Yeah, you uh, pinned by the pile of rocks. Well, if it's eight-foot-tall, I can't on see it. anything on. At the foot... Unless it's, you know, the inscription is eight feet tall, too, you know. You guys suck on the stone. 
The stone has an inscription on it that is hard to read from the distance. At the foot of the standing stone, a small human is pinned face down by rocks placed atop his arms, legs, and back. He is barefoot and wears ragged clothes. And then as Pinch gets a little close to him, he hears him go, Ugh. What? I didn't hear anything. He goes, Ugh. And don't clip uh, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what's going to happen now. <laughs> um... I want to make Grun friendly for a second because I want to delete all these cages. We're done with the cages, I think. I mean, we know that We're the, the cage is above your head. All right. So I I am going to uh, not hold my action. Then I'll use my action to check the guy out and see if he's, like, if I can move some of these rocks off of him. free up this combat tracker a little bit. Uh, let's see. I don't know how baffled by intruders. Yeah, these are pretty heavy stones. What's uh, what's Pinch's strength? Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> Pinch's strength <laughs> sucks. You're not sure that you're the right person to be lifting these stones off of him. Oh, they're They've, that big? Okay. Yeah, well, he wouldn't try to lift something. He's not. They're big yeah. stones. They're heavy stones. It... Uh, well then he can't do anything. Uh, you know he'll just. Yeah. You can Ready tell that the. Pump. Do you like get down and look at the like get into the rocks and and look and see who this individual is? Take your full action. Oh, I like thought. Yeah. I, Give me a. Well, yeah, that's what I. Oh, okay. On eleven, you you don't know who he is, but you think he might be. A, he might be young. He might be a boy. Or a halfling with shoes on. You're not sure. That's terrible. <laughs> well, he was barefoot, wasn't he? Oh, that's true. So you know he's not a halfling. He doesn't have any hair on his feet. Soleil. It's so you got this rascals. cage up. You're like... <sighs> with a 16 so... strength, you don't even need to roll to maintain the hold on it. With Lumina helping you. Holding it up over your head, you know, you could. Right. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just gonna Good stand this. here and wait for them to go, and then once they're through, I will uh follow them later, next round. So you're you're gonna let Lumina go and Jingling go, and you're gonna hold the cage by yourself. We can switch, Jingling. I mean, Lumina can go across. Grab his side, that side. And I'll jump over, relieve him, and then step through. So you're gonna ready to move when he gets to the other side. If I can, yeah. Yeah. If not, I'll just wait till next turn. Yeah, I got you. Twenty six seconds. Uh, Soleil, give me a uh, uh, athletics when he lets go. Let's see how strong you are. How about we shove this door out here, right underneath that cage? You would think that's hey, possible, yeah. but it's not. The cage is down already. You know, the cage has already been down. The door opens in. I don't know. Sorry, Sorry which one of us uh, did you need to give the I need Soleil, since you okay. are letting go and, and moving to the other Got side. It. 
Give me a limit, like, give me an acrobatics while you're doing that. Just cause see if you can actually help a little. So he's like, I don't need your help. And you're like, yeah, you do. And you kind of do like a little shuffle and kind of, and no problem. Yeah. So, uh, Lumina, you're able to get to the other side of the door or the other side of the cage anyways, still holding it up, right? Helping hold it up. And I'm going to move right. you into the room so you can see, because I know that's really what you want. Yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And then uh, I will just, uh, you know, then hold the cage up and uh, end my turn there, hold, trying to hold it for uh, these other guys. All right. So, so uh, Jangalang, they got the cage up for you. You're like, eh. Yeah. Jangalang? Yeah, I want to move on into the room then. I should be 30. Well, it's going to stop, but I see where you went. Okay, I moved you over there. All right, and um, I can see Grund from here? Uh, you can, yeah, actually. actually. I am going to use a command spell. Uh, let me target it. He fails too. Oh yes, I'm going to tell him to halt, freeze, halt. He's like, "You're not supposed to be." <clears throat> he scratches his head and he looks around confusingly as he stops what he's doing. Oh, I skip. Oh no, I didn't. Uh, how long does that last? A round? A one word. Uh, let me share. Why did we get our Must follow his command on his next turn. Yeah, so it lasts his whole turn. So he scratches yeah. his head, and it was nicely that it was his turn right after yours, too. It worked out perfect. <laughs> As, uh, he's scratching his head, and Vayril. All right. Um, Vayril wants to come... Birds are chirping oh, down Kind of here. over to here. And what can I see from there? Uh, I kind of imagining that the door is opening, like it's still cracked on this side. So you can from see that, that Grund is through the doorway. Uh, but he definitely has cover. But you can you can see like his elbow and his arm. He's scratching his head a little. You see his hair. All right. Well, in that case, uh, I am going to create a bonfire underneath him. <laughs> so he gets his feet on fire. Ah, he makes his save. He's like, my feet are getting hot. He like spreads you sold his legs me bad pickles wide. last time. You did get sick, didn't you? It wasn't because they were bad. It's because you ate so many of them. They were so good, you yeah. ate a pig out of yourself. I can shift the blame. Uh, yeah, that's true. Jangling. Um, what can I do now? Let me just uh, call them a few names. Ah. Oh, yeah. He's like... He sees his eyebrow, his mono eyebrow furl a little. As a... I'm going to tell him your mama was so hairy when you were born you had carpet burn. <laughs> he's like... <laughs> he frowls. He's like... Rubs his knees. How did you know? As a... As you see a little uh, tear come out of his eye, oh, he got some psychic damage. And then he's going to move forward a little bit. 30 feet to there.
And that's the end of his turn. Lumina. Holding the cage, holding the cage. Yep. Uh, so it's still in there, so he is just holding the cage. Do you want an athletics check? Uh, well, no, not while both of you are holding it, but uh, Soleil is going to come through, right? So, yeah, both of you guys do the do the rolls, and let's see. Soleil, you can give me an acrobatics to see if you can help him with his uh, strength roll. <laughs> so he ch- Wait, what was that? Oh, you rolled it and then passed your turn. <laughs> yeah. So- so 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 he gets caught like his sleeve gets caught on the cage and he's like pulling on it and you're like ow 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 he's not helping you at all he's kind of making it worse but you're okay you, you you're strong enough Pinch. is there a I, I am used to him making things worse <laughs> is there enough of that chain hanging there to relatch it onto one of these pegs since they pushed the cage back up i i would assume yeah there's there's a, a a half orc that's really strong that's pulling on they could pull on the chain and pull it back and lift the cage up in the air and then well while they got it it. oh so i can't i can't pull the chain down now but i mean they've got the cage lifted so it's the chain down i can just walk over and hook it around there's uh four chains that are loose currently well the one that's hanging down the lowest would be the one that they've got lifted uh, give me a uh, investigation. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You find the right one. So you, uh, it's, what did I say? How far off the ground were they? Ten feet? Six feet. Did I say six? I don't remember. Four feet. I mean, feet. even one... if, they're, if they're over. <laughs> one foot out of pinches reach. Uh, let me. I Go ahead. You up, guys make fun. Go ahead and laugh. I I, th- I do think they're up kind of high, but let's see. Climbs up on the guy who's ten iron tied cages down. are suspended from chains over the hallway and the pan. Okay, that's not it. Uh, dropping the cages. Well, they were made by dwarves, do- weren't they? They can't be that uh, high. This is true. Well, you you assume they were made by dwarves, right? thought I saw where it gave that description. I read that, right? Give I me think it a, said something uh, about how high the lever was. Give me an acrobat. It just says it's somewhere in the middle of the east room, still a set of iron enough. bars bolted into the wall three feet above the floor. Mm, yeah, no problem. Then. Ten yeah. oiled chains are secured to the bars. I thought there I, I, said, three, feet I, thought I said three feet. Yep. So he just pinch goes yeah. over and just grabs the chain and latches it on there that's what he'll do for his action cool and then he'll start start heading over that way well do, before you before you move and all that stuff do you, uh-huh. do you say anything i just say well that's it uh, this here right here just it's just a little wire right here right here all right what are everyone here yeah and make up what how you interpret that how your character would interpret that. Yep. Problem fixed. Told you I'm a fixer. Very real. All right. Uh, so very is going to come up. He wants to get a better bead on Grund. Is he going to have a good shot from there? Yeah. You'll be at minus two. So is there a way the or an angle that I can get without the minus two? To open the door. No. All right. Well, I'll come over and open the door. Okay. And now the door is completely open, and <laughs> he's standing there going, I'm waiting on my turn. All right. Well, uh, while you're waiting on your turn, Mr. Grund, um, and this is the first time the rest of you have seen this, but uh, Vayril pulls out his staff, twirls it a little bit, looking a little fancy, and this whiffs of smoke start swirling around in, in circles. And he holds his staff out towards Grund, and this brilliant 
light shines out of the tip of his staff and a guiding bolt shoots out and hits Grund, or hopefully hits Grund. No. <laughs> Uh, he, he's and like, totally misses Grund. He's like, my foot's hot. And he bends down to feel his foot's hot and it shoots over his head. <sighs> okay. Soleil, you're like... So I go to try to move and get Hold caught. It. And then I realize it's not falling. So I'm going to move in. Yeah, because you look over at Lumina and he's like, holding the cage up. Hurry up. Because you don't realize so, he's not uh, that he pinch hooked the thing or anything, so he's holding it by one pinky. He's like, so if you could approve me, so I so I can see what's going on, please. Stupid door. You don't even see your party members on the other side of the big rock, but you can hear them over here. So I'm you going can to hear go me ahead insulting and... grunt. So I uh, come around the corner as I see Pops blasting this guy. So I don't really know exactly what's happening, but I saw him attack him. So I'm going to shoot him. You also see now that the door is completely open is a big statue here as the guiding bolt kind of flew past its head. It's a, uh, a life-size uh, and lifelike statue of a dwarf warrior wearing a chain shirt, helm, and big boots. He carries a shield in his left arm and a battle axe in his right hand. Uh, the statue All right, looks cool. broken. So, Grand is like, Hey! I don't like being attacked as he pulls out his mace and uh, he's going to step into the doorway and take a swipe at at, uh, at Veyril. Go back! And he swings his mace at you. Kind of half-heartedly a little bit. Uh, since, With disadvantage. Uh, well, yeah, you still he, hit you. And 17. you go to you go to dodge, and you step right into his path, and he he looks a little surprised that uh, he hit you. And uh, he does six points of damage though, as he clocks you upside the shoulder. Paf! He's like, go, go back, you the bringers of woe will come. And Whoa. that's all he's going to do. And at the top of the round, we're going to stop right here since it's top of the hour. 11 o'clock. So far, so good. You guys liking it? Yeah. Little uh, little role good, play good. for session. Yeah. I like my bar. Appreciate your hard work, Drake. Nice when it wasn't. Glad you were able to figure out what it was. Uh, thank you to Matt Akiri for that one for sure. I was going to yeah, reset the table to the last session that worked, which was two sessions ago. So we would have had a little bookkeeping to up, up, update. But uh, but that's it. So uh, that is Princes of the Apocalypse Session 5. Uh, and uh, Thursday, uh, we're going to be over on Marbania stream. I will be, and Marbania will be, and some of these guys will be watching. Uh, we're playing Deadlands. The Flood. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And on Friday, uh, Matt Akiri is running Empire of the Ghouls. Ooh, that one's fun. Because I get to play. I get to play two days in a row. Get to play, get to play, get to play. And then on, on Saturday, we're back at it again. Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maidens over on Rob's channel. So we will be back in the Colden Colden, the cold north, Icewind Dale, uh, doing some uh, exploring and, and stuff. And then Sunday, we are not running, I'm not running uh, against the Giants because of stuff. And then uh, back here on Tuesday, 
so that is uh, our plan, and uh, and that's it. And and we're gonna we're gonna get out of here because some of us need to get some sleep. Yep. Everybody, say goodbye to the stream. Bye, -bye stream. Bye. Thanks, Drake. Bye. Say, bye. Say bye to the stream. Appreciate it, Drake. Thank you.